All right, in this tutorial, we're going to send this animated character using the Alembic format to Blender 2.8, where we can have a go at um, their new Eevee render engine. So, first thing we do, obviously, is choose our character and select Export Alembic. Now, the thing to note here is the file format needs to be Ogawa. And set the range, and we want to export the textures, and you may as well merge opacity to diffuse, saves you the bitmaps. Hit export. Right, when we open Blender, it's a splash screen, just click on that, and the infamous camera cube and lamp now just so you know there's it's got its own way of um, navigating the middle mouse button orbits middle mouse button and control zooms middle mouse button and shift pans so once you get your head around that it's all good you may notice there's a new gizmo up here which do pretty much the panning situation for you and if you want to see say a side view and X click on that oh, I can't do it with my pen click on that and you get the different views you can also when you're near view if you hold alt, alt down it will snap to that view so it's nice and quick see it's good All right so we don't need the cube so let's delete it oh you have to hit that there you go See, I'm still learning this program. Right, let's uh, go and import our geometry, or can geometry cache actually. So import Alembic. So I call it call it Jude. So it's all there in, in 1.1 gigabyte file because it's basically every frame of animation exported as data. So hit import Alembic. Oops, it's too big. So let's undo that. And I did that on purpose. <laughs> so select the file and then here we need to scale it. And I've done some research myself and the amount we want to scale it by is actually 0 0.02. We can leave these things as is. Now we'll import it. And there we go. So what we do know about this is a meter. Let's not do that. Let's do this. This is a meter and it's not on the floor. So that looks about right. Well, it is right. I know it is. So we can delete that. And if I um, just move some, make some room here and hit shift and space bar, off she goes fully animated, including all um, soft cloth and uh, facial animations, all that. It's all in there. So good. Now, one of the nice things about the latest version of this software is um, these tabs. So I can jump straight into a shading tab, which is where we're going to build our shaders that are missing at the moment and up here these little boxes we can go wireframe we can have just plain shaded like um, matte cap stuff then the one that they're defaulting to which is with when you put the textures on this one won't have textures it's always just plain and then the EV render is here but again we have no textures so let's go to this one so up here this is your overview of everything and has all the pieces. So the box, which we don't need, right click and delete it. And then we have eyelash, da, 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 the usual stuff. Camera, I'm just going to drag it out into this, out of that collection. And also the lamp, it's just one of my quirks. I like to do this so that the collection is only a character. 
So I called her Jude instead of Jade since I changed her complexion. Okay. So next up, you can just select any part and you'll see a little gold outline so you know what you're what you've selected okay so as soon as I select the uh, so select the geometry this pops up and this is where our materials happen and we don't have a material so we need a new one so you click new and right away it creates a principled shader with an output now this is the actual material here so when we name it which we are going to do now we're going to call it face actually let's call it head just to be consistent with the other naming conventions and I can probably oh, darn, select their face again let's move this up and take her down a bit I just want to make this a little bigger in case because we won't be able to read otherwise in fact I can go more than that so we see her there and I'll go I'm just using the plus key but you can also use the middle mouse but I use a pen so keyboard shortcuts kind of necessary right so the principal shader has most things you need on it uh, which is really fantastic and if I were to change the color right here I could give it a standardized color I can change the spec the roughness make her look very shiny and so on um, but what we want is the bitmap that goes with her and in fact when you bring in FBX files it does all this automatically but it doesn't use the principled shader what it does do is it builds the old school way of doing it and you get quite a huge schematic of nodes everywhere which is a little bit confusing and nowhere near as convenient as having most of the functions in this one so here's how we do it and most things one of the things that's great about blender is most things you do are consistent throughout it doesn't matter what window you're working in um, the way you approach things is pretty much always the same because they're context sensitive so if I in this case I need to create um, a texture map uh, image texture to, to stick in instead of the color so I go shift a and up comes this little list now the shift a will give you a different list when you are in the modeling window or UVs etc it's the only gives you what you can use within those windows so that's really handy okay so we want to add a texture and we don't want bricks we want an image texture so whenever you've created something it's attached to your cursor and you just have to place it down in the uh, the space here okay and at the moment there are no textures in there so let's go to open and we go and find our Jude and here they are so I'm gonna select and now you can't do a shift select to get them all because we're in blender and blenders windows like I said are consistent and the way you group select things in blender is you sh you hit the B key which is box select and then you can box select like that so let's just do that again so I get everything okay there we go I don't want the first one because I don't know what the heck that is but there you go open image right so all that's done is loaded them all into the system basically and now we have to choose which ones we want there and it's really a case of finding it in the list or using the search engine and just typing in the first few letters of what you need in this case the head and you can see that's the diffuse which is what we want so if I drag this to the base color then we get our texture um, one of the nice things about this latest version is that everything's color coded so color is yellow goes to a yellow so you wouldn't patch color necessarily to one of these other channels because it's telling you look this is what you want it's either here or here 
Um, that's not a, f a hard, fast rule, though. It does change. So, but it is handy at a glance. You can see, boom, I'm going from there to here. So at this moment in time, we now have, I saw we have two other maps available. So let's go get those. Now I could either just duplicate this or start again. Let's do it. Let's be consistent. So we'll go shift A, texture, image texture, and put that down. I go in here and in the search, I start typing head and I look for the specular. And now here's a case where color goes into specular and that doesn't have a yellow no node. And uh, I'm sure the reason for that is is because you're not limited to only using a texture map as a, as a driver for the specular. So they had to do, um, make it generic. Okay, so we dropped that in there. And so now it's using that bitmap to work on the spec. Uh, on the spec. Uh, next thing we want to add is the bump. So again, shift A, texture, image texture, drop that down there. Go in here and we select head and there's the normal map and well it's normals and it wants to go to normal but that's not going to do what we want so let's undo that um, the way to un the way to break the connections is just hold the control t uh, yeah the control key down and just swipe across it and makes a knife and it cuts it um, because the purple ones are vectors and they, they will always need some sort of vector um, node to drive them. So let's go shift A and there we go vector. And what are we looking for? We're looking for normal, uh, normal map, I guess is the one. Yep. And now look, oh, there's a color input. So we can use that color input to here and normal to normal. Now, before uh, you get excited, it's still not going to work because it's because we're using a normal map and not a bump map or um, like a regular grayscale. You have to change it from color to non-color data, and then once you've done that, you should see. And we do; we can see there, and I can adjust the strength. Oh man, that's pretty bad acne. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's say, what was the strength of 0.5? And I think you can right click and reset to default values. Uh, it's not what the default is. Okay, 0.5. So there you go. That's getting one texture in. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things. We won't go through those in this tutorial. In fact, I'm just going to do one more texture and then call it a day on this because there's a lot of repetition, but also there's some other things you need to know about when dealing with transparencies and and um yeah like the hair eyelashes and, and the eyes that'll be another tutorial but for now let's let's do the same thing again for her the body skin so i can just zoom out a little bit here because we've done all this work we can actually copy the nodes we don't we don't necessarily get so say we like that roughness setting and so on and so forth we just select these not not the out not the output because every new texture will have an output so let's select these and control c copy and then we select our next target which will be her body skin and you have to say new you can't paste that one in here you actually have to make a new material and we call it body and as you can see, the default creates a principled shader, which we can delete because we've got one in our in our buffer. So paste that. Oh, it did take the material as well. So forget that. And reattach that to the surface. And right now it's got the face texture <laughs> loaded on there. So let's not do that. And so now it's just a case of changing these. So if I just say body. Oh, there's a bunch. There we go. Body diffuse. Uh -huh. I can't read them. They're getting too small. Body uh -huh. specular. And then body 
bump. Okay, and that's done. And so you know that everything that we do here in this window is actually, because these are materials, if I look in the material window here, they all show up here as well. And so you've got, you don't have to, once you've created this, you don't have to always come back to this. You've actually got the controls here. Um, plus this is where your, your drop downs for all the, the various materials that you're creating are going to go. So in the case of something where materials repeated, you don't have to do all this again. You just go back here and then drop that. So once you go back to your layout, uh-huh, and let's change it to texture. If I want to see, if I want to uh, work on the textures, I'm still getting used to these navigation tools. I can just select this here and everything's, oh, and, and scrolling up and down is with your middle mouse button. But if you want to see what this looks like uh, with the EV render, uh, the first thing I'll do is change it up here from shading to EV. And let's grab this light. And when I say grab it, that's there's terminology. So if you hit the G key, it's grabbed now and I can move it wherever I like. And like I was saying, if you if you want to view this from the top and see where the light is, and then just grab it and move it over here. Uh, and let's have a look. There you go. So as I move it around, it's obviously a little hot. And again, all these controls will show up on the right here. And as is a point light, you've got a choice of sun, spot, hemi, which is like a, you know, a lighting system. An area light, which is usually, um, flat panels and the way to, to, um, spotlights and, and, uh, area lights and Hemi's have this control on it. And the way to, to manipulate that is with the R for rotate key. So if I hit, um, R that lets me pan it just in one direction. But if I hit it twice, I can now move it around. And to stop, to say, right, I'm happy with that, you just click down on the screen. So that's how that works. And I keep doing that because I'm not used to these keyboard commands. That's, uh, that's where we begin. Um, I'll do another tutorial showing how to deal with the transparencies, but this should get you started if you want to try it out. Okay, until then.